Okay, uh, I think we have everybody that we're expecting. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. It is uh, 7.02. Uh, regular scheduled meeting the Town of Berlin Development Review Board. We have two applications before us tonight. Um, application by Berlin Mall and Down Street Community Development for a major site plan review, traditional use review for a um, restaurant and a drive through and a 30 unit multi unit uh, multi family dwelling. And we also have the application by Berlin Mall for a major subdivision um, connected with, with that. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is, before I swear people in, I don't want to see who. Could you tell me who all is here, Tom, please? Uh, Nicola, you want to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Nicola Anderson. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development for Down Street Housing and Community Development. So I'm here with Matt as part of the housing part of the project. Welcome, Nicola. John Davidson, you want to say who you are? You're muted, John. Joe, is it Joe? Joe, yeah. Joe. Joe. Yeah. Hi, uh, Joe Davidson. I'm an architect with Inari Lemus Architects. We're the architect for the uh, Starbucks building. Thank you, Joe. Jason? Hi, Jason Lazar, the Chief Operating Officer of Heidelberg Properties here at Mass Berlin Mall. Uh, the applicant at Heidelberg Properties is the uh, developer manager uh, on behalf of Berlin Mall. Thank you, Jason. Ken, Simon? Hi, I'm Ken Simon, uh, Vice President of Real Estate, uh, Heidenberg Properties, and uh, I'm with Jason. Kevin's phone. Yeah, Kevin Orton, Engineering Ventures, Civil Engineer, working with Down Street and Evernorth. Michael Rushman. Uh, yes, I'm a consultant, Lane Strategies. I'm a consultant with them all. Carla DeWeasel. Yes. <laughs> DRB member. <laughs> Polly McMurtry. DRB member. Christy Flynn. Uh, recording secretary. Sandra Silla. Ever, Ever North employee listening into the conversation. I am not presenting. Thank you, Sandra. I think that's everybody who. Yes, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Can you introduce who's in the room? Yep. Yeah, we will. I, I have someone joining now, Carl, or maybe Carl Marshall, so he's with our office. Okay, uh, uh, I'm Robert Wernick, I'm the chair of the board. My right is Tour Nelson, who's a board member. Tom Badowski, Town of Berlin. David Roy, we in Lanphier Architects, working with Evernorth and Downstreet. Matt Moore, Evernorth. Chuck Storo, attorney for Burling Mall. Paul O'Leary, O'Leary Bark Civil Associates, the civil engineer for the Burling Mall folks. Sean Cunningham, O'Leary Burke Civil Associates. Okay, thank you all. Well, let's start here by uh, swearing in all those who intend to give testimony before this board tonight. Uh, if you intend to give testimony, please raise your right hand. If you swear to tell the truth, and nothing but the truth, and you matter before this board tonight. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, so, um, who's going to take the lead on this? I will. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. We don't have any interesting parties. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tom, am so? I clear to share? Yeah. Should be able to. So, Tom, we'll start with the overall. Nobody's requesting party status. Interest in party status. I think everybody on the, this call is either with the applicant or with the town of Berlin. Is that correct? I think so. Yes. Okay, very good. Paul, okay, right. so for folks uh, looking on the Zoom meeting, um, I have a board I'm going to use for presentation, but uh, Sean is going to have the same drawing up, and he's currently sharing that on your screen, so you should be able to see... The same thing that we're presenting to uh, the board here live. All right, so thank you for the opportunity to come. We're excited to 
move this project along. I'm going to give a, a quick overview. I think Matt might have a few words to say, and then we'll get into a little bit more of the yeah, details. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'd like for is an overview, and then we'll go into details. Yep. So we're basically here for two site plan approvals. For a site plan approval for Fox Run, which is a 30-unit affordable housing building. Fox Run also requires conditional use approval from the board because it's more than 16 units. Current regulations say anything more than 16 units multifamily requires conditional use. We're also here for a site plan approval for the proposed Starbucks. Starbucks also requires a conditional use approval from the board because it has a drive-in feature. So although a restaurant's an allowed use, when we add the drive-in, it becomes a conditional use. Intertwine with the two site plans is the approval of the street network that we're talking about. We'll get into that in a little bit more, more detail. So my intention tonight is to talk about the street network and the two site plan applications all at the same time. And I'm going to talk about how those three elements meet your zoning requirements. The district requirements, section 210, then we'll talk about how it meets the conditional use criteria, then we'll talk about how it meets the site plan criteria. After that, we're going to let the two ar architects do their thing. David Roy is going to talk about the Fox Run. Fox Run building, and then Joe Davidson is going to talk about the Starbucks building. All right, so Matt, if you want to give a quick little intro, go right ahead, then I'll jump back. Great. I, Nicola? Yeah, so yeah. thanks everyone again, Nicola Anderson with Downstreet. Um, we're really excited to be here. We've been working on this project with Evernorth really since 2018. I think people are probably a little bit familiar with the project as we've been coming up through uh, conversations with the Newtown Center. But we're here presenting for 30 units of multifamily um, mixed, mixed um, affordability housing in Berlin. We're really excited for this to be Downstreet's first project in Berlin um, and excited to be here today to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. So just quickly at the, at the overall plan, I'm sure everyone's fairly familiar. We have Route 62 at the bottom. We have Fisher Road at the top, Central Vermont Medical Center, the existing mall, centered around Walmart, uh, the Coles building, and shaded in brown are the two new buildings that we're proposing. Starbucks is the smaller building, and the Foxman building is the larger building right across from Dusevich's project, which is a uh, nearing completion. Chestnut Place, I believe, is what, uh, is what they call it. The uh, entranceway off of 62 is the same place where it is now. The street network that we're proposing matches very closely the uh, street network that's shown on your town plan. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So Sean, I'm on sheet four, if you want to uh, bring the folks in the audience up to speed. So sheet four is the uh, overall grading and plan for the project. It, it shows in greater detail the two buildings. The existing road uh, comes in off Route 62 and then swings on this plan to the right and then connects back in and runs to the mall. Obviously this plan anticipates uh, building the new road for the town center plan on a portion of the school district property and then back onto the Berlin Mall Associates property. So as we look at the plan, uh, St Starbucks is here. It's about 2,400 square feet. It has a drive-through element that uh, will hold about 18 or 19 cars. Fox Run building is a little over 10,000 square feet in footprint. It's a three-story building. has a 30-car parking lot uh, behind it. Again, 30 units total. Sanitary sewer is being extended from the existing mall. It'll come up the street. It's actually shown in red on this plan. There's a sanitary line that comes up and serves Fox Run serves the new Starbucks, and it's being extended all the way over to the school district property to serve any future use that happens on that piece. Similarly with the water line, there's an 8-inch ductile water line that's being extended from Berlin. It'll serve Fox Run, it'll serve the new Starbucks, and it's getting extended all the way out and stubbed out 
again, to serve future development as anticipated on the town plan. Uh, stormwater, we have two stormwater features going in. They're both gravel wetlands. We have a small stormwater feature that's just to the side of the Fox Run building. This stormwater facility will treat the runoff from Fox Run's parking lot and from the Fox Run building. So that'll be collected, be treated by the gravel wetland, and then we'll go back into a new storm drain line and we'll discharge back into the wetland with an existing discharge for the Chestnut Place and for a portion of the Walmart building. We have a new larger gravel wetland that's being constructed on a portion of the school district property and a portion of the Berlin Mall property. Now that stormwater pond will treat the Berlin Mall access road as far as the high point, which is roughly in here, it will treat all of Starbucks parking lot, drive through building. It will serve the new through street that's adjacent to the Fox Run housing. It's also been sized to take future impervious area from this center spot, which currently is being developed, and it's been sized to take impervious area from the future development on the school district property. We looked at the town plan. We looked at what you know your initial plan showed for impervious area features, added up that acreage, and sized this detention pond, it's not actually a detention pond, it's a gravel wetland feature, to accommodate that. So the idea is, is when we come back for future development, either on this parcel or on the school district parcel, we'll have our stormwater permit in place, we'll have water stubbed out, we'll have sewer stubbed out, we should also have uh, power stubbed out. It's not shown on the plan. So we're kind of looking forward, thinking that this is just the first piece of the puzzle we got more buildings coming. I know there'll be folks interested in, in this parcel, and we certainly expect that the school district parcel, whether it's a new town building or something else, that uh, hopefully that will come along uh, in the near future. I'll just note that the two stormwater features, because of the size of the mall property and that we have more than 10 acres of impervious, impervious area, it's actually sized for the 100-year storm. So they're quite a bit bigger than what we would normally see, but that has to do because of the, the total impervious area when we look out there, and I forget what it is, it's, it's, it's 20 or 30 acres, do you remember, Sean? What the, it's a big number, anyway, so, uh, so we're, you know, we're excited to see everything go. We think we've got uh, most of the pieces of the puzzle. Um, when we talk about the road network, the new town plan, the zoning is specific about what the road has to look like. They want on-street parking along, there's a 50-foot spacing on street lights. The sidewalk requirements, we think that we've pretty much covered all those facets. The, the main Berlin Mall Road going in um, has parallel parking on either side uh, beginning, beginning here and going all the way down to the end. Along the Chestnut Place, uh, we only have parking on one side because Chestnut Place has a sidewalk that they just put in, a new curb, and it has that large parking lot in front. So it didn't seem practical to put on-street parking on that side of the project. Similarly, along the detention pond area, because, because the elevation of the detention pond is actually a retaining wall to make that gray difference from the road down to the detention pond, so we're currently not showing any parking along that side. Now your zoning regulations do show um, some streets that only have parking on one side and not on both. As we go by the type B road that's by the Starbucks, you'll see that along that road, we have straight in or 90 degree parking. And then, then on the road that's just to the side of the Fox Run, again, we go back to parallel parking spots on both sides of the street. Uh, typically, the parallel spot, the parallel width is nine feet. You require a minimum of eight. Uh, your zoning regulations ask for a typical travel lane of 10 or 11 feet. We've actually designed it for 12. Um, uh, it's, it's our experience, particularly with the straight-in parking, that you need that 24 feet. If, if any of us who drive a pickup truck or something big, you, you only got 20 feet, it, you just can't get out and clear the guy next to you without doing it in a couple moves. So uh, we differ a little bit. We're a little wider than what your regulations call for. Uh, we think it's a little bit better. We, we think looking at the Berlin Mall Road, that's the same. We have a 12-foot travel width instead of 11 feet. We, we're a little more comfortable with the 12. Um, obviously, if this board came back and said, no, it's got to be 11, we'd, we'd go with 11, but we would encourage you to, 
to maybe think about that a little wider width, and especially considering the amount of traffic and the type of traffic that might be coming in along that road. So we have the street trees every 50 feet. We have the uh, street lights uh, every 50 feet. It's a 12-foot pole. It's an LED light. Uh, there's a lighting plan in your package that shows the type of picture and the spacing. Uh, I'm going to put a plug in for the lighting in that your regulations require it the poles to be spaced 50 feet on center both sides of the road. That's a lot of poles. And if you look at the lighting plan, you'll see this seems to be light poles everywhere. It takes 62 poles to do the Berlin Mall access road and the new road with your regulations. All right? A pole with the base and with the conduit and the fixture, roughly about $3,000 per pole. So we're approaching $200,000 in just lighting for this. And 50, every 50 feet, both sides of the road, man, that is a lot of lights that someone's got to maintain, someone's got to pay the power bill on, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd encourage you, if you drive around other towns, to kind of look at that spacing. And, you know, in, in my view, I'd like it a lot better. I don't mind the 50 feet, but I'd like to stagger. In other words, go 100 feet spacing on each side of the road and then go, you know, go a pole then 50 feet on this side and 50 and go back and forth. I think, again, it's just my opinion, but at night with those 60 some poles all lit up, yeah, it's, it's going to be a bright spot in the sky. You're not going to have any trouble, you know, seeing where it is. So your regulations require the 50, so you'd have to provide us with a waiver or provide us with a way to, to drop back, but I would, uh, I would urge you to consider that not only because of the cost of the developer, but man, that's a lot of poles. When you think about it, every 50 feet, both sides of the road, that's a lot of poles. All right, that's enough on my, my lecture be, be, on the poles. Well, before you get off the lecture, Paul, <laughs> is, is your experience 100 feet on centers and staggered? Is, is that what other you see in other municipalities? Or? Uh, um, 50 feet on both sides is not unusual. Right? I, I have seen it before. The village of Essex Junction, for instance, has poles every 50 feet, both sides. And when you, if when you go down there at night and you look, you know, the first thing to me is like, wow, I got way too many poles. You know, just a lot more light than what I think you need. I, I think some of it depends. You know, if we were, uh, if we were lakeside and it was a board rock and we knew there was going to be all sorts of people and a real lot of activity late at night. Is that an appropriate spacing for poles? Probably yes, but for here, I know we're all hoping we'll get a lot of pedestrian activity, but it, it just seems like it's a little overkill um, to me for that number of lights on, on this project. It, now, if we were talking about one of the, the future streets down in front of the mall, uh, no argument whatsoever. That's a place where you are gonna see a lot of foot traffic different times at night. and. Uh, you know, probably definitely worthwhile to have more light there. Yes, so, so just for everybody's uh, edification here, uh, the the planning commission is in the process of re reviewing their zoning regulations, particularly with the new town center designation. Uh, they they will they would welcome testimony to this end, and I would I would suggest that you you provide testimony to the Planning Commission with respect to the, to the lighting. Okay. Uh, we can certainly do that. Yep, and uh, it's, we hope to wrap this process up in about 45 days-ish. So, um, okay. so uh, the, the timing is right. Uh, I could also, Mr. Chair, if you still allow me to Where continue, uh, uh, we have, uh, the Planning Commission has met with the regulators with respect to the parking. And I believe we have a, a, an agreement that um, parking would be uh, required, on street parking would be required only on that section of a road which would front a building. Okay. So, uh, uh, so that's not in stone yet, but that's heading down this 45 day, you know. Um, uh, so I think that can uh, uh, significantly uh, imp uh, not adversely, but uh, help help mm -hmm. this project. Yeah. Right? I know that was uh, was a concern. Um, uh, and the final piece I would I would say, Mr. Chair, is that uh, 
part of the discussion uh, that was being had, or currently being had, is is some green stormwater. Uh, if if there's no parking, maybe you could do green stormwater in that in that. So I'm just putting that out as well. Okay. The the regulators are very keen on applications having green stormwater um, assets. Okay. All right. Well, we're. We're, we're pretty happy to have the gravel wetlands, actually. I mean, I know the, the planners might not consider that to be green, but, but we, we do on our end. Yeah. But. It's much better than what we used to do. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, random yeah. fact of the day, does anybody know what the streetlight spacing is in, like, Main Street in Berry City or downtown? No, but we, we could certainly find yeah. that out, what it is. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, and to give you a comparison, so. To me, the staggering makes sort of the sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess the question I have is, uh, what, what do you have for the average woman on the street now? Sean, I, I, I could read it on the back part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see any average numbers. Oh yeah, no, I didn't provide the. Uh, we can get that for you. Calculations, right? I can get it for you. Um, I guess. I guess without knowing the number. Yeah. How do you feel about the intensity that you've got in terms of lumens right now? Uh, fairly low. Um, it's it's not going to be. I mean, at, at least it, it it's kind of an even spread. It looks like it's single um, digits, one two type. Stuff. Yeah, one to two is. Yeah, what, that's that's. I guess. Um, that's not super bright. What? That's not. No, that's not super no. bright. Uh, if you st if you went to a um, uh, larger spacing, uh, say each side, but staggered them, you probably have to go to with larger lights then. To get the same yeah. movements. Yeah, we could easily right. do that. Which right. yeah. it could. would be cheaper than having yes. more poles. But oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Like, and, and it'd be a little. I mean, the LEDs don't use a lot of juice, but but certainly yeah. even if we went to, if we changed the spacing to every other, even if we had to go to a fifty percent brighter light, we would still save quite a bit on on the total energy. Because I didn't I didn't think the lumens from what I could see, you know, on a half scale drawing, it didn't, mm -hmm. didn't seem like it was that terribly bright. Yeah, it looks like we're running on one yeah. and a half, you know, yeah, typically yeah. in the street. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, normally what I think about, like if you're in a parking lot, you need, you need, if you drop your keys, you need three or four tenths of a lumen in order to be able to see where you dropped them and pick them up, you know, to give you an idea of yeah. what that is. But Vermont, as you know, typically has very low lighting levels compared to uh, yes. uh, most other states. So just a couple things before I move on to the regulations. Well, thank you for the input. In terms of sidewalks, so we are performing an eight foot wide sidewalk along the Berlin Access Road, and it comes down and it runs all the way in uh, to Walmart. And then on the opposite side of the street, which would be eventually the school district, you know, maybe the town uh, building side, we have another eight foot walk that comes down. It crosses the street here and we drop to a five foot wide walk along this side. One is, we don't have any development over there, and we have the retaining wall, we're a little, we're a little squeezed for space. Plus, the new walk that just went in front of Chestnut, Chestnut Place is also a five foot walk. So we end up with a five foot walk all the way along this side until we get to the intersection, and then we jump back up to eight. The walks on the interior, where we go by Starbucks and Fox Run, those are both five foot wide sidewalks on both sides of the street. Why did you go with an eight-footer on the uh, mall road? We went with an eight-footer because the, the, uh, our interpretation of the town plan was that they were looking for a multi-use path. And uh, the town plan shows that multi-use path, you know, kind of running along the back. And, and along the back has a lot of wetland issues. And, and we've had some meetings with the wetland folks um, because we have a little wetland impact on the corner. We're going to need a conditional use determination from the state right there on the corner. And uh, let's just say the state was way less than receptive <laughs> to the idea of any path that ran along the wetlands in the back. So, so what, instead of getting into a, an argument back and forth with state. We thought short term, what we should do is, is think about constructing that eight foot multi-use path along the road. So at least eight foot multi-use path isn't much more expensive for us than doing a five foot wide path at this point in time. And it at least gets that element in place in terms of you know pedestrian connectivity, 
you know, all those good things that we look for uh, in this town center plan. So that's why we chose to go to an eight uh, instead of a five. Now, Tom, Tom had a comment about potentially continuing the, the parallel spaces all the way down to Walmart. We looked at that, and that's something we're certainly willing to do, um, particularly as we think there's some development potential for this lot down here at the corner. So it would be good to have that additional parking along it. And the last topic before I talk about the regulations is, you know, the idea of having some sort of entrance feature, you know, something iconic, a sign, a, a statue, a fountain, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a creative guy, and uh, it shouldn't be something that you tasked me, but our thought is, is that th there's ample room, you know, right where we come in on the Starbucks lot on this corner. Obviously, there's ample room, you know, on the other side when you come in, you know, you've got to stay out of the town right away with it. We're certainly willing to work with the town on maybe what that feature should look like, but we don't know that we should be the one, you know, to lead that. I, I think we're looking for more input from the town, maybe from the planning commission. I mean, what? It's your town center. It's your plan. You know, what are you thinking about? Um, you know, we can provide power. We can provide an easement. Um, we can certainly participate in bringing that forward, but we're really looking for for some more impact for the town and the town to kind of take the lead on that. And, and we might have a little bit better feel for what that should look like once we, we know a little bit more about what is going to be developed on the school district property and what's going to be developed on this lot and, and further on. I mean, it, our, our thoughts on that might change in a few years depending on what comes. So uh, very willing to work, very willing to give an easement on, on our property. Obviously, you wouldn't need an easement from us on your property. but. We think that's a discussion that the town should lead and uh, tell us where they'd like to go on, on that portion of it. Any questions before I jump into the regs? So, so your, uh, I can't recall your subdivision drawings, did it, did it reference an easement to that end? No, okay. it, it does not. But okay. we, we would gladly yep. show okay. a potential easement there, you know, wherever we think is the, uh, the best spot. Yep. Well, let me stop you. This, Tom, do you have any further comments at this point? No, I, I, but I just, again, I want to reiterate, these are brand new regulations for the town of Berlin. Everybody in this room, it's brand new for us. Uh, if, if we see things that could be tweaked that improves the regulations, now's the time to bring that to the table, right? It just, that's the last I want to leave it with, with you guys. I'm going to ask the board members if they have any questions about the uh, general nature of this project, uh, what's been discussed so far. No. No. I gather I heard from both Polly and Trent. Yeah. Did you have anything else? No, okay, I, I, I don't either. This is good. Um, okay. Why don't we go ahead and go through the details here. You know, and it, it is a new set of regulations. You know, we've been trying to work our way through them, too. Um, you know, in general, we're pretty happy with what we have here. You know, we besides my whining about the lights, you know, and the spacing, <laughs> You know, the, the street network and everything else, it, it lays out pretty good. You know, the sidewalks, sidewalks work pretty good. Uh, you know, we think that this could be a, a really great asset for the town it's coming come, forward. And we're, we're pretty happy to be working with you. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's come a it. long way through sketch plan to till today. Yeah, right? and we got, we, you know, obviously we have the, the issue with the school district yeah. and, and some of those pieces. And we know, and that's not something that we're going to solve here tonight. And so we're not even, not even planning on talking about that, to tell you the truth. So... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly go through the regulations and just hit some of the major points on how we comply. So when we look at the base zoning district, um, as you know, we're in the town center of the TC district. Multifamily dwelling for Fox One is, is an allowed use in here, as is a restaurant for the Starbucks use. And, and I should note, again, that the, that section says that if you have more than 16 housing units, you're required to get a conditional use permit, which we talked about, and that if you have a use that has a drive-in, which Starbucks certainly does, that also requires a conditional use. There's no maximum residential residential density in the district, so there's no calculations that we have to look at as to, you know, whether we have enough land for the number of units we have, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, the, the zoning district map has changed a little bit, you know, the key about the number of streets, but we are proposing both streets to be uh, type B streets. There's the form-based standards as part of the, that section 210. So if, I, so if I look at the B street portion of it, so 
the first thing the regulations have is what's called a, a BTL or a build to line. All right, so the build to line is from the curb or the edge of the travel way back. So for a B type street, the build to line is 40 feet. So that 40 foot line is shown. It runs kind of through the middle of the Starbucks building and it's just into the Fox Run building. So the Fox Run building is set 39 feet back from the edge of the right of way. So we're 40 feet back, so we're the build to line is 40 feet back, the, the building is set 39 feet back, so we're one foot inside the build to line. So we comply with the build to line for the Fox Run building, and the Starbucks building is back 28 and a half feet, uh, so we comply with the 40 foot uh, minimum BTL or building setback. So when we look at the parking uh, setback, it's, uh, it's 10 feet from either the sidelines or the rear, and uh, we actually don't have any parking for Starbucks. All the parking is in the public road. It's all public spaces. Fox One has a 30 space parking lot behind it, and that meets the 10 foot minimum setback from the, the side setback and the rear setback line. Uh, minimum lot width is 75 feet. Um, both lots uh, comply with that. Then we have the primary street facade. So the building, the building and or wall has to occupy a minimum of 50 feet of that front facade. So with the Starbucks, 50 feet or 50 50%, 50%, sorry, 50%. And so with the Starbucks building, we, we meet that by extending the building with the use of a decorative wall, six foot tall wall on either end. And that's allowable um, the way we read the regs. And so that puts the percentage uh, along the frontage of the Starbucks building at 51% and the existing Fox Run building along the front is 52%. Obviously we could we can adjust Fox Run by adjusting where the property line is, but we meet it um, as as shown. Uh, minimum lot size is 15,000 square feet. Um, the lot that Starbucks is on is about 44,000 square feet. The lot that Fox Run is on is 96,000 square feet. So when we look at your B Street standards, we believe that we meet all of the standards. Uh, building height, uh, minimum building height of uh, one and a half stories or 25 feet. Uh, Starbucks does meet the 25 foot requirement. Fox One easily meets it. David, it's probably the average is what, about 35 feet, depending on where you yeah, measure it from? Just about 34 feet, and you got to keep in mind, too, we're elevated above the road yes. on quite a distance. As you come off yeah. the road, it goes up an embankment uh, to get to that first level, yeah. but just so you understand that. Yeah, so three-story building yeah. on a four. The Starbucks five building five. meets it by basically having a facade that extends up. There's, That's there's, correct. There's no, there's no building behind that facade. There's no there? building behind it. When second it, when story or... Right, we're not required to have a second story, we're just required to meet that 25 foot um, yeah. minimum uh, building height. That, was there a plot given to the second story or just? No, I don't believe so. So I'm gonna skip, you know, we have H streets and P streets and, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about uh, section 2101, which is uh, E, which is the street standards. And, um, so your standards require that we we have a right of way for all the streets. So whether we're parallel on street parking or angled on street parking, requires a minimum of a 60 foot right of way. So so we are showing a 60 foot right of way that follows the new access road in all the way to the Walmart property, and then we have a 60 foot right of way that follows the road that serves Starbucks and goes down alongside the Fox Run housing. Now by definition, those right of ways create lots, all right? So part of this, the second part is the subdivision approval. And, and the establishment of the right-of-ways in the streets create lots. So this right-of-way creates a lot on the inside, which uh, I think we've called outlet, outlot F. And then we have another lot that's created here in the end between the Walmart property and the Fox One housing, and we call that outlot G. So we have uh, two new outlots um, that are created. Uh, 
Starbucks is on outlot A, Fox One is on outlot C, the Chestnut Place was on outlot B. I think uh, D is a small outlot right across from the Berlin Mall, and E, I believe, was Kohl's. If I, if I can keep all my alphabet uh, together. <laughs> and then, right. the, and this is an undevelopable lot. So we, we think we have a, another good lot here. We certainly have an excellent lot here, F. And then obviously we have the school district property, which uh, obviously has a lot of development potential on its own. So. The street standards talk about widths of the street, um, how wide your parking should be, and uh, we believe that we comply with all of those street standards in section 20, 2101, with the exception of the width, that we're talking about a 12 foot lane instead of an 11 foot lane. Question, um, you said 60 foot right away? I think yeah. the drawing shows 65, am I correct? It's 60 to 65 is what, so in some places I think along here, because of the width of the sidewalk and that multi-use path, and to get the five foot green belt you're looking at, I think we did 65. That's well, right. show 65 on, on the interior roads, for instance, that's all 65. That could well be. Yeah, it's what it's what's well, it's it, You know, we're just kind of working from the middle out by the time we get everything, so yes. Just, you, just, you said 60. Oh, you're looking at the plat, so if it yeah, says 65 plat. on the plat, then it is it's 65. Kind of what it says, yeah. yeah. I think it's a minimum of 60 in your, right. in your regulations. Right. Thank you for correcting me on that. So uh, the last section of 210 is about architectural standards. I'll, I'll let the architects talk about that. I'm gonna, before I kick it to them though, I'm gonna just quickly talk about uh, a little bit more of the standards, the conditional use standards, all right? So we're talking about both Fox Run and Starbucks require conditional use approval. So if I look at chapter 330, conditional use standards, uh, the first section talks about capacity Would of- Would you address the site plan standards first? Sure. So, site plan standards, chapter 320. So the first thing we get to in the site plan standards are parking and loading areas. Right? Now, uh, parking is a little, a little squirrely looking at your site plan standards with the town plan because of the amount of on-street parking you know, that we have. So, so typically your, your site plan standards look like, okay, I'm gonna put a restaurant in and I've gotta have this many spaces and that's how big the parking lot has to be. In this case, in some cases we have a parking lot and in some cases we're using the on street. So just looking, if we look at Fox Run, your minimum parking for Fox One is one parking space per dwelling unit. So we have 30 dwelling units and we have 30 parking spaces, a dedicated 30 parking space lot, but if you look at the parallel parking spaces along the road to the side and in the front, and there's some other spaces here, you, you have roughly another 28 or 30 spaces that are available for those folks to build. So we meet the minimum. Um, kind of hard to count just, just how many we actually have. It just depends on how you want to look at it. If we look at Starbucks, um, if you look at a restaurant use, your regulations require one space per 300 square feet. Starbucks is roughly 24, a little under 2,400 square feet, so that would call for eight spaces uh, if we looked at that. Now, because we have on-street parking in front of Starbucks, we don't have um, you know, a particular parking lot, we have a total of 18 spaces along this street in front of Starbucks. So there's street spaces. Um, your minimum requirement is eight. We have 18. Um, uh, typically, you allow a maximum of two times the minimum but we really can't reduce because I don't think you want us to reduce on street parking. So it, that's why I'm saying it's a little, it, it's a little weird, but I, I think we're pretty good. I think we have plenty of parking. And I think in general, when you meld the two regulations together, we meet the intent. Uh, loading areas, we don't really have much for loading. Uh, most of all Starbucks delivery are small trucks, you know, UPS, you know, we don't have tractor trailers coming to supply, you know, a Starbucks. So, so uh, basically they could either you know, use the drive-through lanes, they just pull in, they can actually park and run stuff in, so there's, you know, we don't need a dedicated, you know, loading, we don't have, you know, a big food service truck, you know, you know pulling up there a couple times a week and unloading. Uh, we haven't done any shared or off-site parking uh, calculations. Uh, again, all those street spaces are essentially, you know, shared spaces. 
Paul, we should stop for a second. Yeah, if any members of the board have questions as we proceed here, because there's, there's a lot going by here, uh, just just you know interrupt and raise your hand or get uh, get my attention. And, and and we certainly understand that we're coming back at least one more time. You know, so our, our goal today is just show you what we have, get some feedback from you. If we can get specific questions, that'd be great. And then hopefully when we come back the next time, if we need to drill down a little deeper on individual items, we can do that. Paul, you have a question. Yeah, I have a question about the Bill 2 line for Starbucks. So which road are you coming off of? So it, it would be the, the road that's directly in front of it, where the where the parking spaces parking are. In. So yeah. are you coming, are you calculating it from the road itself or from the edge of the parking or what? Edge of, it's the uh, edge of curb uh, in, so 40 feet off of the edge of the curb. So the edge of the parking. Edge of the parking, edge that's of the correct. Parking. correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that would be the same with the Fox Run building. It's from the edge of the parking. That's where the 40 feet is measured from. Paul, did you uh, detail out what the curbing is going to be here? Concrete curbing is what we're proposing. <laughs> and all the streets. All the streets, all, all are, streets are curved, yes. Thank you. All right, dimensional standards on parking uh, pretty much dictated by Section 210. You know, 18 foot wide typical parking spaces, uh, parallel spaces, a minimum of eight feet, um, we're, we're at nine. So uh, that matches pretty well with what your site plan standards ask for. So I think we're in accordance there. Uh, layout, you know, again, we have a mix of parallel spaces and, and 90 degree perpendicular spaces, which again meets your both site plan and the section 210 requirements. Uh, erosion control and drainage. Um, we have a, a full set of erosion control plans. We will require an erosion control permit uh, from the state of Vermont, along with a stormwater permit, and pretty much whatever permits are out there we're gonna need to move this thing forward. Uh, snow storage, we don't have specific spaces for snow storage, like, you know, if we need to, to truck some temporarily, we will, and either store it on the mall site or, or take it off site. We really Urban areas now, it, we really don't design for specific snow storage areas. It just uses up uh, too much valuable space. And, uh, you know, it's just better to, to figure if we need to move it, we move it. All right. So whether you're downtown Montpelier or any other place, that's typically how we handle it now. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, so I guess back to the parking. Um, so you're looking to have two handicapped spots on the, for, for Starbucks on the, New B Street? Town Road. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then these two new B Streets, are these going to be town roads or private roads? All right. They're being built to town standards. They're being built within a right-of-way. Um, we, we are hopeful that the select board will take over these roads and own them at some point in time in the future. Um, that, that's Really not a discussion for this board, I, I don't believe, but that's our intention. Is we're building it per your standard. It's your new town center. We're building the roads how you're asking us to build them, and we're certainly hopeful that you will own them. Okay. Um, and the width of the handicapped uh, parking spots, are those going to be the same width? Or I know you've got the van accessible striping there. You know, between the two spots. Yes, uh, spaces and the striping area are both nine feet wide. Right. Okay. And certainly, we're 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 certainly flexible to add more spaces or adjust them a, a, as as need be. So little details like that, we're glad to work out with a uh, whoever might wish to comment on it. Okay. Put my Grinch hat back on more. Grumpy about that nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it's a big joke in in our office that you know, as I get older, my my filter doesn't seem to work nearly as well as what it used to. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm more inclined to tell you exactly what I think instead of you know trying to tap dance around an issue. So uh, that's why Sean's here in case I get out of control. You know, he'll sit me down. So. Um, <laughs> 
uh, markings and edging, uh, obviously all the spaces will be marked. It's a paved road. We have concrete curbs, so they'll be, be very well um, marked as, as we go through. Um, we're not proposing at this point in time any electrical vehicle charging. Uh, we don't have, well, we have a previously developed site if you want to consider the road, but uh, obviously we're rebuilding, you know, that, that whole road, so we really, really don't have anything that's previously developed that, uh, that would count. We talked about the parking. Um, access and circulation um, you know fairly obvious the circulation that we have we have the new berlin mall access road we have the new b street that goes by starbucks and by fox Run housing As we talked about before we got sidewalks on both sides of the street almost everywhere so there's lots of pedestrian connectivity one side of the street has the eight foot wide multi-use path and the other street has a five foot wide uh, concrete sidewalk obviously at all the intersections we'll have the you know required handicap ramps uh, you know etc Etc. Could you run through, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, um, the circulation for the drive through? Yes. So as you come in from Berlin Mall Road, you take a right onto the B Street. You come in, and then the drive through is this lane in the back. It's actually split here so that we can get cars will actually double stack here and then merge as they come up to the window. So we have enough space to have about 19 cars. So we want, we worked quite a bit on this to make this work. We want to make sure that we didn't have any cars that would back up, you know, into the through street. So we don't want to ever block the through street. So I mean, back and forth with Starbucks, obviously Starbucks has a boatload of experience as to what they need, you know, in terms of, uh, of stacking distances and um, they were the ones who actually suggested that we split it and double stack it so that we could uh, be a little bit more compact in our space. So that's the idea that you come through. There's actually a, a couple of kiosks here that you pull up, you know, that has the menu board there, you know, you tell it what you want it's, uh, and then you pull up uh, to the window. There's actually a few parking spaces here. So if for some reason you I'm not a Starbucks guy, but if you ordered something really exotic and it was going to take them a while to get it, you know, you could actually pull, pull ahead and park in one of the spaces, and someone might, uh, might run it out to you. So, is, no. is there has Starbucks done any research? I, I know, you know, they, like I said, they've got plenty of experience on, uh, especially peak time stacking and everything. Yep. But with things changing under COVID, have they done any? new research on that is, is that still an appropriate number the reason why i'm bringing this up yeah. is is you know looking at mcdonald's on the harry montpelier road uh now they almost back up onto the very montpelier road i know kfc does back up into the very yeah. montpelier road at times um dunkin donuts does back up onto the very montpelier road at times mm -hmm. and yeah, that's an excellent question. I, I think they have looked at it because the, the stacking requirements increased a little bit during this process, but uh, we'll, we'll, we can certainly ask Starbucks. Say, you know, who knows how that's going to Yep, We can, we can ask Starbucks and see now, if they've had changes in what their requirements are since the advent of COVID. Because yeah. you're exactly right. You know, there's a lot more takeout um, business yeah. than, than what they used to be. So we'll ask that question and, mm -hmm. uh, and see what they have for, uh, for an answer. So. Thank you. I was actually struck by the fact there was a large number of spaces you were providing for stacking. So, yeah. Uh, but but you, you make a good point. We're seeing it now. But yes, you are right. seeing it Certainly now. You know, it's, 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 uh, it, it's kind of like with banks, you know, for years, you know, the bank would want to come in and want to have four drive through lanes. And, and you'd go by there and there was never anybody there. And you're like, why do you need four? Well, now that COVID hit, you know, you go by some of the banks and, and they're full. You know, and there's two or three cars backed up there. So... There certainly has been a change. Uh, Especially when it's in the lobby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, no, double sure. stacking is a unique solution to this. So It, it yeah. is unique, yeah. It was actually Starbucks was the one who yeah. forwarded the information to us. Actually, I've seen that in a number of locations. Let's double stack. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've seen that in a number of locations. It, it worked pretty well. All right, so um, uh, we front the state highway, but we're using exist existing access there, so there really isn't any issues there. Uh, Again, we just have the one curb cut. The alignment is, is based on the town center plan. Uh, spacing isn't an issue. We don't, we don't have shared access. Um, emergency vehicle access, obviously, so, Paul, is did you, adequate. Did you talk to the state about a, you know, a, a 
a review of that intersection uh, to get their approval of this this development. It, it typically, you know, it, uh, what, towns are required that if you have a development off of a state highway. Are you referring to the traffic study? No, I'm just saying just this. I mean, there's an existing permit on on that road at 62 and, and Berlin Mall Road. But now you are adding this additional development, which has has traffic impacts and stuff like that. T typically, the state of Vermont wants another bite of the apple of that <laughs> of that Route 62. Yes. So, have you spoken to VTrans at all? We about? have not spoken to VTrans. Um, we will require a permit from VTrans, a, a 1111 uh, yes. permit, because we will be rebuilding. You know the Berlin Mall Road within there right away. Um, obviously, there'll be a statutory party at Act 250. Um, they will be provided the, the traffic study, which I'll, I'll mention a little bit later. But uh, you know we we're we're pretty much the same as what's out there now on that entry road. So we, we don't really think that uh, that we're going to have much uh, comment. What we'd really like to talk about them about is maybe some sort of pedestrian facilities on Route 62. Yeah. So we had something to connect to, but that's a that's a that's a long haul for a. None of us they have limited access. Yeah, <laughs> for limited reason. access for a reason. All right. Although I see a lot of people walking on that section of 62 <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you envision that VTrans permit after the fact of this, of if, if the town of Berlin would issue a permit? When, when it looks like we're, we have this fairly well nailed down and we're moving forward, and then we'll start our state permitting, and we'll start we'll start that process with the, with VTrans once we. I assume we've not started the stormwater yet either. No, we haven't. It's all it's fully designed. However, we've got all the numbers, we're ready to go. But once again, once we get this, then we're gonna, you know, we'll be applying yeah, yeah. to get those stormwater per permits. So Makes sense. obviously, we need to know what's happening with the school district property because, sure. you know, some of those features are on their property, and either either they've got to be a co-applicant or they need to transfer ownership to the town. You know all about that, but yeah. obviously that's, yeah. that holds us up a little bit before we go forward. Yeah. All right, continuing with the, uh, the site plan standards. Well, 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 we're talking yeah. about that. Uh, so all this is obviously contingent upon that working out. Yes. Um, one way or the other with an eas easement or whatever. But um, did you have a plan B? Yes, we have a plan B. <laughs> and. Uh, Okay, I don't need to know what it is. We're working on this plan now. Okay. So. We do have a plan B. If that doesn't work out, um, we'll be back with these same two buildings, very similar to what they look like, but obviously the road's got to change. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we, we can't build on someone else's property. So, so, so you can pretty much envision what plan B's going to look yeah, like yeah. if we come back. All right, so bike, bicycle access, uh, that's, that's an item that we have not addressed. All right, so when we come back the next time, we need to provide you more specifics about bike access in terms of you know how many how many bike racks we're gonna have, where they're gonna be, are there's gonna be any interior places, you know, is Fox Run gonna have places to put, you know, to store bikes. And so we haven't provided you with any of that information. We will when we come back. So we haven't addressed that portion of the site plan criteria to date. And, and you're you're aware of our multi-use path. You've, you've yep. discussed it earlier on. And, yep. and uh, so I hope you include those assets. I, 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 are you been, have you been talking to uh, um, folks from, from um, Otter Creek who are spearheading that? Uh, maybe we need to just have a conversation yes. with you guys in Otter Creek. Right? Yes, it would be good to talk to Otter Creek and see what they okay. say. So pedestrian access, we've talked about that a little bit. You know, we have the eight-foot multi-use path. We have the five-foot um, sidewalks inside. We have what we think is excellent pedestrian access uh, throughout this new proposed uh, town center. Uh, we really don't have the internal walkways. Um, you know, obviously there's a walkway from the parking lot into Fox Run, and there's a small little walkway, you know, into the Starbucks building. But you know, we don't have any cross country or any special internal um, walkways. Well, I, I think there was a note, uh, and yep. maybe you could point it out with, with to going to the school. Or? Yeah, there's a note here. You know, long-term plan is to have some sort of pedestrian access that goes across the school property. Yep. So, you know, we we've shown. You know, a potential spot. Matt's done some work to try to determine maybe where the best 
uh, place might be, and that's where we're showing it right now. You know, we talked to the state about maybe a more direct path, and, <laughs> and that was a very short conversation, <laughs> talking about uh, crossing that uh, class two wetland. <laughs> That was like one of those, are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, type I, things? I've had that same conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, landscaping and screening. Uh, we have landscaping plans um, that are part of the set. Uh, you know, Starbucks requires fairly extensive landscaping along their property, as uh, does Fox Run. Uh, Fox Run has a community garden area out front, um, and we have the requisite 50-foot uh, spacing on street trees um, all along uh, both roadways uh, all the way in. Uh, screening, uh, you know, talks about screening it. Obviously, as you drive in now, this is a very thick wooded area. And, uh, you know, we certainly won't be touching any of the space within the state highway right away. So there's going to be, you know, an existing thick band of trees that's going to protect it, you know, screening from Route 62. The same thing along the back, you know, again, thick trees. You know, we're not going to be doing anything. We don't see that there's any other place that we need to screen from. We, we don't think there's any, you know, high sections that are going to look down on this thing that, you know, it, we'd be glad to address it if someone tells me otherwise, but we think the existing vegetation is going to provide more than adequate screening from uh, Route 62 and the adjacent streets. Now, will you be doing any uh, clearing at all within the buffer? The uh, with, the within buffer? This, this section? Yeah, the wetland buffer zone. Uh, no. The, the only place that we're going to impact a buffer is, is here right. on the corner. Right. But along the back on Starbucks, uh, this dashed line is the 50-foot setback. Right. And uh, we should be outside of that. We shouldn't have to clear or go into the buffer um, whatsoever. The only wetland impact, again, is, is the corner. Yeah. All right, same thing with the detention pond. We're right up tight to the 50-foot buffer, and then, but we're not well, going to. Let's go back to your point about the screening. Screening yep. gets kind of skippy as you get to the um, uh, far corner of the property, uh, which uh, Fox Run will be on. And Here. if you clear it all the way back to the, to the wetlands, yep. you'd be basically looking at the highway. So well, you've got, you got to stay out of the bus. Yes, yeah. So, so this is our clear to line here. Okay. You know, so obviously you, you still have a big chunk of this unbuildable section, and then you have you know, all that treat area that's within the Route 62. Well, it's not treat area. But I don't think they're back all the way to there. No, I'd have to look to see just yeah, where the tree line falls. I, I, I did. I looked at the map today. It, it, it's, 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 it's treed, but it's... It's, it's, it's still fairly open. thick in there. I actually picked up the wetlands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Usually the guys are anxious to go out surveying, but when they came down here to pick up these wetlands, they weren't very anxious to go back a second day. It was, it was pretty thick stuff yeah, trying to get mark. through there. All right, so we think, um, you know, in terms of parking lots, uh, utilities, um, most of the building utilities are going to be either rooftop mounted. Um, we'll have a few um, power transformers that we'll have to provide a little screening for as we go forward, but we don't anticipate um, that will be a big issue. We have uh, uh, two dumpster areas that are both screened. The one for Starbucks is right here on the corner, and the one for Fox One is right off the edge of the parking lot. Again, it'll be a, a four-sided uh, screened enclosure. Outdoor lighting, uh, we talked about a little bit more in detail. You know, our current plan, uh, you know, complies with the requirements of the uh, new town plan uh, will be a class two lighting. They're a 12 foot tall pole. Uh, we will be a, an LED 100% uh, cut off picture. There's a detail of it, uh, detail of it located uh, in the in the, seats, in the sheets. You do have a couple 20 foot poles too, don't you? Yeah, we have a couple 20 foot poles for the parking lot. Uh, I think there's two that, that do the parking lot. But the idea, the, the advantage of the 20-foot pole with the new LED and the sharp cutoff is that that 20-foot pole will reach all the way across that 60-foot lot. So you don't need poles on both sides. You can do it with one. It used to be with the old LEDs, with the old metal halide lights, um, the bulb had to sit up inside the picture quite a ways to be 100% cutoff. So they wouldn't reach as far. They only reach about 40 or 45 feet. Now with the LEDs, because there's such a flat plane. Put it on mute. This guy's talking. 
Oh, you do it. You do it. No, no, I'm just... Ken, Ken, you're on. You're not on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So now with the new LEDs, it, they tend to be a little bit flusher, and it's easier to direct them, so it's easy to get them to, to shoot all the way across the 60-foot parking lot and not have, you know, that loss up into the up into the sky. So another nice feature of the LEDs. Uh, not not proposing any uh, any special use lighting. You know, we're not trying to light up the side of the building or anything like that. Um, no really security lighting other than, you know, the parking lot lighting and there'll be, you know, obviously lights by the entrance doors. Would you provide us with the usual statistical data on your lighting uh, if the average? Yes, we certainly will. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and make sure we're dealing with yep. uh, usable areas. As just just the average? Pardon? Just the average? Uh, average and uh, I forget what the other number is. No, uh, a lot of times we'll give you an average, we'll give average you a and, maximum. Uh, max, yeah. maximum. And, uh, and, uh, uniformity? Is uniformity, kind of uniformity, uniformity yeah. 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 Standard calculations. Yep. So the second place um, that we're lacking tonight is uh, looking at your signs. All right. Now, we, we do show on the Starbucks plans where the, the, where the ordering boards are going to be, where some of the directionals are, but we really haven't talked and provide you any, informa any information on what Fox Run might have for a sign on their property directing you to their building. Or, or again, we haven't shown any Starbucks sign that might be out along the roadway. So we will get that information to you. For the, for Is the your intention to request the sign uh, approval at this time, or will you defer that and come back in a second time? Um, I don't know that. I'll have to really talk to the Berlin Mall folks and see um, just how they'd like to treat that at this point in time. It's a discussion we haven't had, so I don't not going to volunteer e either way, which way we're going to go. We'd likely defer. You'd likely defer? We would likely defer yeah. and get it later. That's typically what okay. we do. The, uh, the, the issue with deferring, uh, you can only defer so long when we go to Active 50. Active 50, if you're going to have a sign, mm -hmm. you, you've got to do it for Active 50 because they are not happy campers if you come back to amend your Active 50 permit because you failed to give them sign details. The first time around. Well, I think signs here in, in, in town only require the approval of zoning administrator. Yeah. Am I correct, Mr. Zoning Administrator? That's correct. So uh, I'm going to skip so the you signs. Need, you don't need a hearing. Okay. And there's a lot of stuff on signs. Directory signs, pages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was the first thing I wrote down here. <laughs> where, where are they? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Uh, so there's no detail provided on signs at this time, no. correct? Okay. No, we will provide that. All right. And then you decide whether you want to provide to this board or you want to just simply provide to the zoning administrator. All right, so I'm jumping all the way to outdoor use areas. Um, obviously, we have an outdoor patio area on our Starbucks that we'll be using. The, the, you know, there's some outdoor use areas with Fox Run, but it's a community garden. You know, there's some lawn. It's not... I don't think it really meets the intent of your regulations, but certainly the space outside of Starbucks is going to be tables. You're going to be able to sit out there, you know, enjoy your coffee or sandwich or whatever. So that's a, uh, we do show that. They're shown in detail on the Starbucks plan. So we believe that uh, that we comply with that. Uh, we're not asking for any outdoor storage, so we don't need to address that section of the regulations. And then there's the performance standards, right? Um, noise. Uh, certainly don't expect to be a, a large producer of noise. You know, we have a residential building and, uh, and a drive-through. Uh, we don't expect to produce any glare. Uh, all our fixtures are going to be LED, 100% cutoff. Um, odors, uh, maybe if you really despise the smell of coffee, you might be set back a little bit. But other than that, we don't think there's any... Uh, unpleasant odors that will come from either and, and the same with vibration we don't we're not producing anything we don't have any equipment that's going to produce any excessive vibration we don't expect to produce any electrical or radio interference uh, waste storage we have a we have enclosures for both uses that will take uh, both waste materials and recyclings um, we don't, we're not producing any particulate matter or airborne solids. We're not producing any flammable toxins or hazardous substances. Uh, jumping to erosion control, we have a full set of erosion control plans. We will require an erosion control permit uh, from the state of Vermont. Um, you go into a fair amount of detail with erosion control practices, which are generally out of the state um, erosion control requirements. Uh, stormwater management, we talked about that a little bit. 
before, and then we have two stormwater areas, uh, gravel wetlands, uh, one for the Fox Lawn building in the parking lot, and a larger one that takes the remainder of the site and is sized to take the future development areas. And that storm drainage is part of this design now, right? That's correct. I didn't go through it yep. in detail, but so you've already got your collection system. And yes. Yep. And, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, we are not um, asking for any waivers. So last uh, yes. Sorry. I have a question. So I'm assuming the timing of this precluded any collaboration with the current stormwater uh, study that's happening. Is is this independent of that? Uh, actually, no, it's not because uh, we are doing the stormwater study. Oh, okay. Uh, piece, our firm. Piece so so we're uh, so this is just a piece of looking at the the, the whole parcel. That's where they're uh, new up. up, up. Yes, the three acre, three acre rule. The three acre rule. So we're looking at the, all of the Berlin Mall property, along with the uh, car dealers, along the, uh, the the access road on the, oh, on the Fisher Road. End. Okay, you're involved with them too. Yes, we are. Yep. Okay. And Logical. Du Bois and King is doing the CDMC. Yeah. You moving on to conditional, conditional use standards? So, so before you move yep. on, it, Paul, if you don't mind, uh, uh, looks like you're. Water and sewer a assets are like right in the middle of the streets. Yeah. So if you're having to do any repairs or tearing up the roads, if, if you give it any thought to, to, to getting them out on the edges somewhere so there's not so much disruption of traffic if something happens, or 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 more more importantly, the cost of, of replacement of the asphalt and, and stuff. Um, it looks like both of them are going right down the middle of the of the road, and those are costly ventures to, to do if you have to do a repair. Uh, we haven't looked at that. Um, sewer typically runs down the middle of the street. Um, water, we can we can certainly relocate the water uh, outside of the, the future street. Yeah. Sewer, we can look at too. I mean, we've we've had projects where we've located the the issue the issue in that sixty foot right away is that. You know, we're going to have power on one side that we've got to kind of deal with. Um, you know, we kind of run out of space, yep. you know, so the middle of the street is nice. Because the sewer, being a brand new sewer, you know, you know, we would hope that it would have a, you know, a 50 or a 70 or an 80 year, you know, life cycle before we had to do anything with it. So, yeah, City Montpelier so. thought that too. And but yeah, yes. so we, we can look. I, I just, we can look and see if we can't move. Certainly, just, we, certainly the water. We can look yeah. to, to move that out of the way wherever we can. It, it's particularly gate valves, hydrants. Uh, obviously, hydrants aren't going to be in the road, but try to move the problem areas so that you could access that. So, thank you. So, um, traffic calming features. Have you added anything to here that the calm traffic, pedestrian bump outs, or any of that kind of stuff here? Uh, we, we have not. All right. Um, there really wasn't anything shown in your town plan about that. It's th there's some traffic coming features that are built into it. I mean, the fact that you have on-street parking, you yeah, know, it yeah. definitely slows people up. I mean, if and you have very sharp corners, like like this corner, you know that that's a sharp corner. Yeah. Uh, you know, in fact, it's we've been. We've been tweaking it to make sure that our 18-wheeler is going to be able to get through there, and it, and it's close, you know, for them right now. But you know, the sharp corner right, oh, yeah. you come in. Yeah. As long as he knows. Hmm. When you come in, you you know yeah, that's, that's, that's not yeah. a that's zoom not just a, cut out. Who, the uh, zoom I think just cut out. <laughs> we're we're back. Back. You back? You're back. Everybody back? Just a moment. Uh, I can hear you and see you now. Yeah. Okay. Now you get you left. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't we haven't specifically looked at any additional traffic calming. It, it, are, are there any it, pedest pedestrian crossings out there? Yes. I mean, there's pedestrian crossing here. There's you know crossing here, crossing here. 
So you know, crossings. you're familiar with these bump so, offs, right? You know. So it, it may be at the crossings that we do a raised crossing bed, you know, to try to slow down traffic. Uh, the area I'm most concerned about is in front of yes. Uh, yes. Chestnut Place. You yes. know, people come out of here, yep. and they get on it. You know, it's a, you know, you got a 400 foot straightaway. And the four and stop signs are up now, so. Yeah, yep. yeah, and yep. that's good. And yep. so, yeah, but potentially we can we can look at at maybe doing, or at least at, at least design something and if it turns out it's a problem so we could come back and implement it so so then you, you at the at the turn right okay at the yeah right there no up up up, up. yeah right there so the access to the future goes to the left here right that that, that t intersection what do you envision there as as traffic control stop sign light is there a light that goes in there no i think it'll just be a stop so, I, I i don't i don't think this T section is going to happen. You don't think it, you'll it, it, too much impact on the wetland, I, and that's why we kind of redesigned this yep. with a T here, because we think that this is going to be your access okay. uh, to to this parcel, yep. and, and we would envision that this would be a four-way stop once once this happened. It, it'd be just a stop sign here initially through movement, but once you had development here, it would it would become a four-way stop. And if it, you don't. That's relatively close to 62. Yeah, but it's you not. You it don't is, think it's going to back traffic? No. Okay. You, you've got 300 feet. Okay. I, I mean, you, you know, I, just, I can't envision having that much traffic. Okay. You, we back we've got to think that through because it yeah. may not be a four way, maybe just stop yeah. signs on the two side streets. And yeah. 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 But that's, that's something that's easy sure. to adjust and you just have to, you know, kind of get a feel for it. You know, the, the reason to make it a four way stop is because you're getting too much speed along here. Yeah. You know, you, you that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to, so. what can calm traffic down here yep. because it is a, it's a, it's a highway now to do that. You know? the, the biggest problems with four way stops in an area like this is that, you, you know, people don't obey them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people on the main road tend to blow through them, and that's when you know the potential for yeah. you know pedestrian collision Disaster. or a car collision you know happens. So, so I missed it. I don't know if you brought it up. I don't think you did, but but uh, sewer and water allocations. That are I think uh, Sean sent you uh, proposed sewer and water allocations mm. today. Uh, no. So I, I don't think we've, we've had them. I, and I don't think, and, and typically, the, this board doesn't grant permits until those allocations are, are done and, and they're, uh, on, with respect it's to what's- It's a different board. <laughs> yes. With yeah. respect to wastewater, there's a, there's a fee associated with it, but yeah. as we did with, with uh, uh, the senior housing project there, the right. public work board, says if your project doesn't come to fruition, you'll get, get the, the monies back, right? right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so do you have those numbers yes. now? Yes, and we'll, we'll send them to you again tomorrow. But uh, okay. for, for Starbucks, we're anticipating that uh, we have a total of 55 seats, including the outdoor seating and typically eight employees. So we're expecting a, a design flow of 2,304 gallons per day. And then for the Fox Run building, I don't think they've settled 100% on their mix, but assuming there's 15 one-bedroom units and 15 two-bedroom units, um, they will require 5,250 gallons per day. So a total is 7,554 uh, gallons per day. We certainly don't expect any water pressure issues or anything like that. We have a tremendous uh, water pressure uh, out there. Uh, uh, the Public Sport Board meets this coming Monday if you wanted to get applications in by then. Uh, or the, then the next meeting would be the second Monday in January. We'll, we'll probably go for the yeah. second Monday in January because yeah. obviously we won't be back in yeah. front of you that yeah. quickly. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, uh, Do you anticipate any issues there, Tom? Of having allocation? Yep. Yeah. No. Great. No. Got lots of allocation. Lots of allocation. Oh, let me see. Well, okay. uh, that's all I have. Yeah. Uh, all right. Conditional use standards. We'll wrap it up, and then we'll jump to the architects. Yeah. All right. Chapter 330, conditional use standards. The capacity of community facilities and utilities. Um, we have not talked to the local school. We're not aware that there's any issue with a, with a school-aged children. Um, 
I, I believe a uh, fire commented on, on access. Uh, we haven't seen a comment from police. Um, uh, so the police commented on your sketch plan, and he said nothing has changed since yeah. since then. Okay. So, so it, it was a it was a fairly lengthy comment yeah. from the police chief yeah. on yeah. that sketch okay. plan. So water supply, sewage disposal, and stormwater we talked about. Um, we, we don't think that there's a, we think that you do have adequate capacity uh, for us there. Uh, in terms of traffic, um, Roger Dickinson prepared a traffic impact study that we submitted to you. Um, Roger's the same one who did it for Chestnut Place and Dusevich, the same one who did it for the Cardale expansion that came in. Looked at the uh, Route 62 Berlin Mall access intersection, looked at the uh, Fisher Road uh, Berlin Mall access intersection, then it looked at the signalized intersections, Fisher Road and Route 62. Uh, the 30 unit multifamily housing building is a very low traffic impact producer. Um, Roger estimated it will only produce 11 a.m. peak trips and 21 uh, p.m. peak trips. The Starbucks is a large producer, relatively large producer in the a.m., produces a total of 215 a.m. peak trips, and uh, as expected, uh, the p.m. number drops considerably down to 97 uh, p.m. peak trips. Uh, the the trips for Starbucks are are downgraded a little bit because it's the traffic consultant uses what they consider to be bypass trips. In other words, it's not expected that people are going to drive from Montpelier just to go to Starbucks. That, that most of the traffic in and out of Starbucks, the people who currently use Route 62 or go to the mall or work out at Planet Fitness or whatever. So the the data suggests that up to 80 or 90 percent of the trips might be bypassed. For purposes of the study, uh, Roger assumed 50 percent. So he only used half, half of it bypassed, the other half were new trips. But when you look down through the data, you know, basically it hardly makes any difference in the level of service. All, this, all the intersections um, have good existing level of services, typically in the you know, B and C range, and they, uh, they have a slight increase in delay, but they basically remain on the same level. Roger had a couple recommendations. Um, he noted that there's no speed limit signs currently along the Berlin Access Road and suggested that we add a number of those. And also suggested that in places along the current road, uh, some of the vegetation was blocking some of the site distances. And just to look at that, and depending on how you know this new road ends up being configured, that we just keep an eye on the vegetation and make sure we don't, we don't impact uh, site distances around um, some of the corners. So gladly would entertain any other questions on the impact study, but it's fairly straightforward. So Roger assumed that 50% of the traffic going to Starbucks would probably be at the mall anyway. Yes, at the mall or going to and from the interstate um, ramp. As you can yeah. think, you know, in the morning, someone jumping on the interstate to go to work, yeah. swings in the Starbucks and then pulls back out. So that's, you know, fairly reasonable, I think. To it does assume. impact the intersection, though. The, uh, no. Actually improves the level of service in one direction. There's so many trips that come off and go back, so it's kind of odd when you when you look at the numbers and say, "Ah, how'd that one get better?" And then when you look into it a little bit deeper, you can see uh, why it is that uh, one movement actually got better. All right, character of the area. Obviously, has he, has, yep. has he, have you submitted this to the trans? Uh, we have not, but they will certainly be getting it. Yep. Uh, character of the area. So obviously, we're within the town center. Um, these are allowed uses within the town center. Um, so we certainly don't expect that it's going to, that it is going to be compatible uh, with the area and it's not going to impair or diminish the value of any surrounding uh, properties. Uh, natural resource protection, uh, we don't have any steep slopes, we don't have primate soils, um, we're not aware that there's any necessary wildlife habitat after consulting some of the state maps. We are having some impacts on a wetland as we talked about right here in the corner. We have a couple hundred feet of wetland that we're going to impact. Uh, we actually have a wall that we've designed there, a small six foot tall retaining wall to try to minimize that impact because we know that the wetland folks are going to come back and tell us to do everything we can to minimize the impact. So we just said, hey, let's just do the wall, you know, uh, be done with it and show good faith with them. How, how high is the wall? Six feet. Are you using any tiebacks for that wall? Not expected to, no. It'd be a gravity block wall. So gravity block wall? Yep. I just I find when you get around six feet and you've got a load on it, uh, you're, you're obviously desi you're, yeah. des you're designing, you're not just winging it, but yes. uh, it does need to look hard, I think, at uh, 
some retaining. Yeah, we can take a look. We, you know, typically we think about when we get eight feet and higher, we, you know, we do the some sort of retaining, whether it's grid or tiebacks. Uh, six feet, we're usually fairly happy with a gravity wall, but we'd be glad to look at it. I mean, yeah. It doesn't cost much to put in a grid. No, it does not. Grid is cheap. Uh, energy conservation. Let me just replace the wall myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> energy conservation, um, we don't expect that we're going to reduce solar access to any adjacent properties. Um, obviously, we're a very pedestrian friendly, you know, we're going to promote, you know, that people ride bikes or uh, not use their cars here. Uh, certainly the public trans uh, mass transit currently services the mall. We expect that they're going to continue to service, you know, this property. And, uh, you know, if anything, we think that will likely enhance it. Um, Last one is conformance with these regulations. Um, you know, we believe that that we are conforming fully with the zoning applicant with the zoning requirements for this district. And uh, and I'll gladly entertain any questions, or if you want to think about it, we'll give uh, you know David and Joe a chance to talk about uh, the building architecture a little bit, and I'll sit down and take a break. Uh, that would be good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want some of the boards? Well, I was wondering, Sean, do you have our elevation? We do. I can yeah. work off this, yep. but I think if you put the elevation we'll put this on the screen, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Want this one first, or do you care? Yeah, I'm going to actually speak on this first. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. that's fine. I'll, I'll manage right. it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Um, so Paul's done a great job. He's kind of uh, can you, can you already picked up. Yourself? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. My name's David Roy with Weeman Lampier Architects on behalf of Evernorth and Downstreet, um, and, and the designer for the Fox Run building. Um, Paul, I'm not going to repeat a lot of what Paul and even Nicola uh, started to say no, no, I, earlier. I, I, want to, I want to stop you for a minute. Now. Sure. Now, I know we've seen some semblance of these before, but these were not submitted with our package. So they weren't. we did not have an opportunity to review these drawings at all. Okay. Uh, just so you're, you're, you're just telling you up front because you're, so you're catching us blind. Right. I think okay. you got Starbucks, but you didn't get these. You got right? Starbucks, yeah, but we did yeah. not get these. Okay. So yeah. uh, my apologies. I thought you had uh, had already been submitted and you didn't see these. Uh, so we um, really you, you need to go slowly here. <laughs> understood. Yeah, we will. Um, and, and and frankly, you need to furnish some copies. Yes. Okay. We'll there. take we'll take care of that. Yeah. When when we got him, it was kind of too late to send the whole package back. So Tom had already sent all his packets out. So okay. That, that was my mistake on the timing for our drawings. So not a big deal. We know we're yeah, coming we're, back. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah. We do. You're coming back. So we'll go through it slowly. We'll make sure you you understand. But just so you just so you understand. We, yep. There will be no intelligent questions. We really haven't seen the drawings. Oh no, I understand. <laughs> And we will have questions. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so you've spoken about um, this road here. I just want to reiterate that uh, we're actually coming up this road. Uh, there's a 5% grade incline from this uh, mall road, mall property road, up as we move south. So this, this uh, parking area is quite elevated above this level here. And that's also indicated by the grades in front of this building on the north side of this building. Uh, as you come off the road, there's going to be quite a slope to get up to the main level of that building. Well, so I just want you to be all there. aware of that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was not seeing the drawing. It's okay. Yeah. Um, again, they've, they've spoken eloquently about the 30 person parking lot. Um, we have 30 units in the building. 15, just to do the allocation, there's 15 two-bedroom uh, units, uh, one three-bedroom units, and 14 one-bedroom units. Uh, and I can restate that next for you. Um, we have 30 parking spots, as you alluded to, uh, on the south side of the building. Uh, and there's going to be a community gardens area here and a play area here for children. Uh, and there's the main entrance to the building comes from the parking lot uh, into the south side of the building there. Uh, there's kind of an outdoor covered canopy area. We'll have all the rec all the lighting will be recessed up into that canopy. Um, and there's a bike rack 
location under that canopy as well. Um, we have sidewalks which connect to another door, an exit door here, an exit way, uh, that comes along the parking lot and connects in with the uh, sidewalk parking that Paul was referring to along both sides of the, uh, the drive, the, the roads. Um, and again, this will have a, we'll have a west side entry exit component here uh, that gets us access onto this road from inside the building. And we have an entry point also on the north side of the building, which we are trying, like a Dickens, to try and get it to line up in some way to, uh, uh, to what did you call it, acorn? Uh, chestnut. 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 Yeah. You had one that right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're trying to work through some more detailing around getting that alignment of those uh, the, the sidewalks and to just reinforce that connection. Uh, possibly we could look at some road, road calming if we are able to do that as well along that intersection. Um, the bike path here, uh, we connect back into there from a sidewalk into the multimodal path. Um, really like that, uh, that element. I think it's really going to reinforce connection to any development which takes place here and here. So I think that's a positive, really positive attribute as opposed to along the back of the property. Um, our stormwater retention is off to the east side of the building, uh, just north of the wetlands buffer, as delineated by that, uh, that dotted line. Uh, the building is a three-story, uh, 30 unit, as I indicated before, um, approximately 34 feet in total with a flat roof on top. Um, and we'll be utilizing uh, heat pump technology. So everything's electronic, electrically based, heating and cooling um, with the mechanical units on the roof. Um, Is that the heating going to rely entirely on heat pumps? It does. We're, we're talking about what avenues we had for backup. We can actually provide a small amount of electric resistance for backup. I'm not sure if that's direct, the direction we'll go or not, but uh, we are looking, evaluating options for that. Um, to the best of my knowledge, heat pumps still are making it when it gets 30 below. Yeah, when we get to the design temperatures that are 13 below, whatever, uh, if there's a prolonged period of time, it obviously impacts the ability of that heat pump to maintain pressure. So you will need some sort We'll need some sort of backup. I'm not sure what it's going to be at this time. And so. we haven't hired our full design team. Yeah, yet. that's so. correct. Yeah. yeah. The selection process is underway for the engineers. Um, so the building itself, um, we've got an element that connects, like a horizontal element on the first floor, a band that connects uh, the entry on the north side of the building here uh, to the entry on the east side of the building there and kind of wraps around and anchors that corner to the, uh, to the street intersection. Um, and obviously the main entrance is, is independent uh, and, and just a free open clear open to the south side of, of the uh, get this out here. So this is the element, as I said, this is raised quite high above the, uh, the main mall road, mall property road. Um, and then that first floor element will, there's an entry component there and an entry component on the west side. We're kind of wrapping around and connecting that. Uh, the materials are... Uh, that's the north view? This is the north side, the street that, the street side, side that's looking at the uh, street, yep, street, the mall property oh, mall road. road. This is the road that's going from Mall Property Road up to our parking, and we'll have an entry element on that side as well um, with egress stairs, and we'll have our secondary means of access egress will be on that uh, western side as well. Um, we, are, we have, we've revised the elevation of the windows a little bit. We have bigger windows in the living rooms, a little bit smaller in the bedrooms, so there's a different fenestration pattern that's evolving, I guess we'll say. Um, yeah. But in general, uh, we'll get that updated to you and, and so you understand. But it's a mix of uh, composite materials, uh, both clapboard and 
and vertical siding uh, to create a mix uh, look and probably some slightly different colors, more in the earth tones and gray ranges. Like a hardy plank or what? Well, there's a there's a product called um, WK KWP. Uh, it's a mineral board, a little bit different, newer product. It's not a cementitious board like a hardy plank. Uh, something that we're using, it's got a good warranty, comes pre-finished, um, but it's actually got like a, um, it's got wood as its base material, but it's a, it's a resinous composite. So in our regulations, we talk about building materials. Yep. Does that meet what we have in our zoning regulations? I believe it does. It's very similar in the look and feel to a cementitious or clapboard type product. Um, we could we could share that a little bit further, but that's our recent. Yeah. So I just I just request re review that. Okay. And if this is new technology and we should be adding that to type of product to this yeah. regulation, we, we should be doing that. Happy to okay. do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, supporting documentation yeah. to that effect. Yep. Um, so let's see. So this is again the the Merlin Berlin Mall roadside. Before you leave there, before you leave there. Yep. So what's uh, there like bump outs? Is that I mean help me? So these are recessed in just yep. a little bit uh, to provide a little bit of uh, undulation. What what how much recess do you think that is? I think it was uh, about a foot almost. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we also like the, the the roof line will be interrupted just a little bit. These have just flat canopy roofs that stick out over the entry at all the uh, entry points. Um, we'll have downcast lighting within the recessed ceiling of it. Um, very simple, straightforward. If you've seen, Nicola manages the, the downstreet property in Barrie. Probably similar in nature in terms of scale, materiality, uh, those types of attributes. So. Um, Nick, well, that's a darker building than this building, isn't it? That's like a green, yeah. It's a, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a gray green. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's so you you're familiar with what's being built across the street, right? At the at the senior housing project. Oh, Juice Adventures Park. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so how do these two look compared to each other? I mean, you know. Uh, uh, well, we looked very closely at the elevation. We didn't look so much at the detailing of the of the trims and, and finishes. Uh, very early on, we were looking at the relative scale of the buildings to be concerned that one wouldn't overpower the other because we're up uphill from it. Uh, so our focus was really on balancing the, the height as you drive through the street to, to manage the height. Of course, they have a different roof line as well. Um, from a material quality, I don't think we were trying to emulate them in any way. We kind of wanted our own character uh, and look. Uh, you know, feel free to if you have anything to add. But um, but yeah, we were worried more about the massing, the relationship of the road. Uh, we really did want to bring it close to the road, um, but we were li uh, he, Paul alluded to being 39 feet yeah. to the build two line. Um, that's really limited by this uh, this incline from the road. Uh, it's hard to manage that uh, and still get it right. So, do um, you see people using this front entrance much? This side? Yeah. Yeah, I think if yeah. you're going to Walmart, you'll drop right down that front entrance yeah. and down the sidewalk. Yeah. It'll be an eight foot wide uh, multimodal path along that edge. I think. Uh, I think that'll encourage its use and activity. I think we have to manage like, yeah. that stairway right. pretty well and integrate it in. And if we can align it with uh, the Chestnut Hill property, uh, I think we can encourage that connection and reinforce that, that connectivity. But you also have an east and west access too, right? We do, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So this is on the west side coming out onto that street as well. And more than half, we need 50% of our entries to have handicap accessibility so we're going to have a ramp access off that come over to the high point close to the parking and then come down the road so we're almost going to have two kind of parallel sidewalks uh, for a bit there's um, no access on the east though there's no access on the east it's a stormwater retention area uh, yeah. right out on the yeah. eastern yeah. side yeah. here um, and there's units that front right on that as well so um, 
Paul, I think, referred to some of the site elements that we have. We have the dumpster location at the end of this turnaround. We have like a smoking zone outside of the building because smoking's not permitted within. Uh, we have community gardens along this, uh, this front entry area. It's on the south side, so good access to sun and light. Uh, and then we have play, play space and 30, 30 parking spots. Um, Dave, I was thinking about the, the height question. Yep. And maybe it would be helpful to explain a little bit why the building needs to have that first floor elevation there and we can't we can't just sink the building down uh, to be right at grade with the road because of the wetlands and drainage and, and, and so forth. Yeah. I think that might be helpful just to understand that, that we're limited uh, by the site constraints in, in what are, where our first floor is at. And then also the other piece is having uh, meeting the accessibility requirements um, really on the side and from behind uh, is Challenging. <laughs> we spent a lot, yeah. a lot of time on moving our building and saying what happens yeah. if we go up, what happens if we go down, and we were into a few feet of where our first floor could be. Yeah. What was limiting on the first floor elevation? I mean, you could have been at the street level, no? That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Why well, not? Yeah, I mean, if we were to be down at street level, we wouldn't be able to have any units front on this side. We'd be engaged into the hillside. Just the first floor, right? Just the first floor, yeah. 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 Um, but when are you trying to maximize the net yeah. usable space and community space? And stormwater. And stormwater, storm yeah. Storm water yeah. from the, I know, Ke Kevin, if you wanna chime in, uh, you know, hear it all on, on some of those site constraints and. Yeah, I think you covered them. I mean, the other the other component is groundwater, right? Yeah. We're, we're as you know, not too far from that wetland and the wetland buffer. And so uh, and digging down 10, 12 feet into the existing grade is going to have some groundwater issues. Yep. Green wetland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It was made by the industry in the first place. True. Thank Any you. questions you or... Yeah, let me say, let me just yeah, stop me a second. Uh, uh, Christy or uh, uh, not Christy, uh, Carla and uh, Polly, do you have any questions? No, I don't think so. I'd be looking forward to seeing the revised drawings. Yeah. Yeah. My apologies. I, I thought everything was in your packages and on time, and that's our fault. We'll uh, we'll make sure you have that. I'm good. Good. Sure. Yeah, go ahead, the, uh, the height of the steps, do you know what those are going to be? Six oh. inch steps or? Yeah. <laughs> the rise, yes, the rise. The rise. Yeah. On this, it's close, I think it's nine or ten feet. Um, it may be even more. He's looking for no, the no, individual, no, step. individual, individual step. step. Oh. Individual step. Uh, uh, the tread, yeah, tread, no, there'll tread be a height. seven inch height yeah. and eleven seven. inch tread. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's the maximum allowable. Yeah. You. you think it should be less, Tor? I'm thinking it should be less. Six feet. Yeah, Six I mean, feet. you can do that. Um, sometimes, like in ski area settings, we'll do like a shorter riser and a longer, a wider tread. Um, yeah. And that's okay. We can look at that. Um, it may add. Yeah. You're talking about the outside steps, right? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the tread should be wider than seven inches, I think. Yeah, the tread will be 11 inches deep. And then okay. six, seven inches in height. Oh, the riser. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Give it the stairs are eight inches. In a residential yeah, setting. And, and outside steps yeah. are usually like six. So. Yeah. 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 And I'm not opposed to doing that. That's fine. I, I mean, if we go to six and twelve, we'd like to keep the, the ratio <laughs> correct. Yeah. And unless it's covered. Um, yeah, these steps. Are, yeah, these are not tread covered. of eleven inches. Doesn't give you a lot to work with yeah. when you times you know, when you're dealing with snow. Okay. So I, I, you know, I don't know whether you got the room for that. Uh, uh it's 
tight. Oh, we'll okay. make it work. Yeah, yeah, I think we're we're taking we're kind of taking a hard look at that corner now that we have our building set where it needs to be in terms of relationship to the road and the parking and the sidewalks. The the front the front corner and that front entry is challenging. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I think we're going to look at it maybe engaging you know landscape designer to to try to soften that and see what we can do there. So that's that front door and those steps down to the multi-use path. I think that I would call that a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to present something that says we know we need to have a front door. Yeah. And we know we need to get down to the sidewalk. It'll be popular. I mean, it'll be used. So, right. Uh, so, yeah. so you so you'll see an evolution. We need to have more than minimum height rise and minimum tread. Really yeah. Good. Duly noted. I, I, I Duly understand. Noted. Yeah. I, I I agree. I yeah. didn't think that way. But good point. Good. And Kevin, I think you and I can work through that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I guess just one other question if I may. Um, I think you mentioned earlier that you're not looking at EV charging stations at all? Um, Even for the uh, parking at yeah. Fox Run? Or? Paul alluded to that. I We haven't mentioned incorporating EV charging stations in this. Um, we will, presuming that we have to go through Act 250, yeah. And we haven't crossed that threshold yet. Uh, we would most likely be required to meet the stretch code and have the EV stations. Yeah. So we're fu we're fully prepared to do that. Uh, that's not a requirement uh, for for the town per se. Uh, and so that's something that we're going to incorporate in our own site plan uh, in our. Uh, is we would move through Act 250. Yeah. That said, what what I've actually heard from some of our partners around the state at other uh, affordable housing developments is that actually there has been an increase in uh, the use and ownership of electric vehicles by our residents. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so we're 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 attuned to that, and and we're certainly open to. To doing more uh, into doing that, so it's not something we're going to resist. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so will that be added to the Berlin plan or or not? Well, yeah, I mean, they, I think it makes sense because yeah. it is the trend, and you don't want this to be outdated in a few years. All right. And Act 250 is going to require it. I don't know the exact code. number, but yeah. Yeah. and it's no longer a stretch code. It's actually part of oh, the requirement yeah. now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess we didn't look at it for this application, but we will as part of Act 250, and, and we, we can incorporate back? it into. We the, should incorporate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's definitely missing. It's you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, got it. Heard you. Like yeah. This. yeah, we got it. Okay, would you have anything further you wanted to share with us? I think that about covers what I had to say. Um, happy to let um, their architect weigh in, and then if, um, if anybody has any questions, I can come back. Before I let you sit down, uh, questions, other questions by the board? No. No. Tom? And, and so this is, this is, not the final drawing. You see the windows are changing. Yeah, we've okay. even changed it since then. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just trying to refine it a little bit for a cost estimate that we're preparing. When do you think we'll have something closer to the final? Uh, we submitted it to Sandra today, so I would we can get it to you this week. Yeah. Well, we haven't set a we haven't set a, a future hearing date, uh, okay. but you know we obviously want an opportunity to review it before the meeting. Yeah, uh, no, I, you I, will definitely yeah. you will have it before the the yeah. next meeting, yeah. uh, for for sure. And this elevation is yeah. is a very accurate indication of where we're headed in terms yeah. of the overall, you know, massing and the different materials and in, fenestration yeah. in in the yeah. the general pattern of of uh, uh, segmenting the building into three sections. Yeah. We're pretty settled on, on that design. We really like that. 
Uh, and again, as Dave said, it's the sizing of the windows that we're going to tune into now. Um, so what, it, I wouldn't expect to see anything terribly different when we, when we come back, based on what I've heard so far in terms of the elevation. So uh, obviously, now is the time yeah. uh, to hear that. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, again, we need an opportunity to digest your drawings and yeah, compare, that's compare them with our own bylaws, which we are still learning. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, you're, you're right. That, that, is, that, 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 that is definitely fair. Um, that so is definitely fair. And, and Matt, you said you were going to gussy up this north uh, elevation with landscaping. Uh, I said that we yeah. are talking to a landscape designer, and yeah. we are looking at, at different ways to solve that design challenge yeah. of the of the steps. Yeah. So yeah, no. How do we really engage that corner? Yeah. It's going to be a very notable feature in the whole in the whole scheme of things. So we we don't want to. Will that be part of the next to middle? We thing? do. We yeah. The landscaping yeah. plan is in progress, and we'll have that for you. Yeah. That would be good. Yep. I, I'm going to try to wrap this up by 9 o'clock tonight. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to do is, is we've got, we know we're going to have further discussion on this, mm -hmm. and we yeah. the opportunity to review this, but more, more specifically revised drawings. Perhaps we could hear from the other architectural. Yes, uh, th thank you. I, I, I think it's, personally, I think the building looks, looks nice. So. Thank you. go back to the uh, Starbucks yeah yeah hi guys I'm um, just kidding I'm gonna um, share my screen if that's okay oh, yeah. well you got it off here so either way this is fine yeah. I, yeah. this is fine I could just go through this um, I just want to kind of talk about the hey, Starbucks. Joe, re Joe reintroduce yourself yes I am Joe Davidson um, partner at Ignari Lumbus Architects uh, we are the architect of the Starbucks building and uh, we're working for Heinenberg properties um, so, um, for the Starbucks building itself, um, we kind of took a look at some of the Starbucks materials and designs that were, were in Vermont, particularly Essex, um, Junction, and, um, also, um, reviewed, uh, Starbucks design standards. They have certain requirements for the inside of their store and certain finishes and branding that they want. And uh, I know uh, I'm not going to really talk too much about the site and drive through um, uh, window because I think that was kind of addressed already. Um, but that, that is a standard that, that Starbucks has kind of determined based off of their operations um, for, for stores. So the, the stacking bed, uh, the number of car stacking and all that is kind of their requirement based off their history of, of, of I think it's their peak time, which, which is uh, usually in the morning. Um, for the drive through um, We did take a look at the architectural uh, standards, and I guess what I'd like to do is kind of give a little overview of the building and then kind of highlight how we believe we are meeting these uh, standards. Um, and then obviously we are open to hear any comments and um, your, your opinions on the building. So the, there are a number of uh, materials in the uh, Starbucks elevation, and you can see that in this rendering. Um, this here is a uh, wood siding. Uh, it is a buried texture uh, tongue wood siding. It has depth to it, uh, and the boards themselves are not on a regular pattern. They are various widths and sizes that, that range from, from like four inches to eight inches. Um, we also have some, some darker brick here, um, storefront and glass that is, is the vast majority of the um, front of the building. The parts that do not have brick, uh, any windows on are, are part of the back of house or restroom areas. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not, you won't be seeing the glass there. And then uh, one um, element of, of, of the standards was, was the um, non-primary use of EFIS. Um, we do have some EFIS on this building. We believe that there are a variety of different um, materials here. 
and textures that this is not necessarily a primary material because you have brick, the wood, and the this all going together. Um, there is an outdoor seating area with a covered uh, sunscreen canopy. There is also a solid canopy that runs around two sides of the building. Um, and on the um, back side, if I can go to the next rendering, thank you. Hey, Joe, I'm going to just show my ignorance. What is EFIS? EFIS is, is, is a, it's called an exterior insulation and finish system. Um, what it is, is that it's uh, it, basically a, a foam insulation, which we have to provide some continuous insulation on the exterior buildings anyway for uh, insulation and energy efficiency um, for the code. And then this has a basically a textured finish. I'd say stucco, but it's, it's not necessarily stucco. Thing. It's like a textured finish, stucco-like on, 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 on top of that foam. And you're saying our regulations discourage that? Your regulations, um, and I'm just pulling them up right now, it's um, number four in the materials. It just says synthetic stucco pieces. It cannot be used as a primary exterior cladding material. It does not prohibit it. It just does not um, does not allow it to be the primary material. So what percentage of this building is EFIS? I, I don't know exactly offhand, but just a, just a rough estimate, I would say probably around 30%. Um, I'd say we have probably 50 a little less than 50% of it brick, and maybe uh, 20 to 25 uh, of it. And if you look at the, I believe we have all four elevations, that might be a better, better plan to look at. Um, you can see on the back of the building, it's a little bit more of the EFIS use, uh, and then the wood use to kind of define the drive up window, the pick up window. Um, on the front of the building, I would say that that material is probably the EFIS material is, is less than 20% of the facade. On the uh, patio elevation, there is no EFIS material on there at all. So all the pedestrian facing sides of the material really are of the building use this material very sparingly. Where it does get a little more use is on the rear elevation, which is the, what we're calling the, the smaller side here. Um, and then the drive-through lane elevation it, it is a little bit more, um, but in no no instance is it is it over fifty percent of the facade. So can can I ask you, uh, whatever the final design is, that you give us a, a statement from you indicating the percentages of the materials used in that. Yes, we can we can add that to to the plan on the next submission. I, I understand that we will probably need to be back here, so I will add the percentages of material on the facade. Thank you. Joe, I'm having a little trouble with orientation. Uh, main entrance elevation, that's facing the B Street, correct? Correct, yes. And that, that has the street parking along this uh, front, right. front yeah. facade, that main street so elevation. I, I, why wouldn't the rear be the back side of that? Which, it really, I think it's just mislabeled. I think it's labeled and it, it, it should be the rear, should be the drive lane elevation. Okay. So, which, which so, side is the patio side? The, so, if we're looking at the main entrance elevation side, the patio the side, left, it's towards the housing. The, yes, towards the housing. It, it's the left side, and yes, you're correct. That yeah. is towards the housing. Okay. Um, and, and I know Kevin had mentioned this this screen wall or this wall here to help extend the length of the uh, building. It also actually serves a purpose of screening uh, the vehicles uh, from from the pedestrian street that are, are going to be in that drive aisle as well. So we think that's a, um, a nice feature to have. Um, so I know we're trying to get out of here. So I'm just going to go through the um, each little section of the um, standards that you have. I'm not, I'm not going to shut it down at 9 o'clock, but I'm just saying that my goal was not to go much past 9 o'clock. So I, and we know we're coming back, so we thought we'd like to cover as much as we could. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, I'll kind of give you our, you know, um, plan. So we, we talked about the orientation. The building is oriented to the street. The main entrance is, is facing the, uh, the street parking. 
Um, we do have the entrance sign and element here with canopies over the, ele uh, the window elements. Um, so I think we kind of meet the, the uh, entry element feature here, although it's not as pronounced as maybe it could be um, in terms of your standards. Um, part two is the articulation. Now, in your standards, it says that the building needs to be broken up into sections. Um, they can't be any more than 80 feet. Uh, the entire building length on the longest side is only 71 feet. And with that, we have broken up that building with a variety of different materials in terms of the, the wood, the uh, ephus, the brick, and, and, and the glazing. So uh, on each side of the building and even the drive through lane, the materials are broken up into much smaller lengths than the 80 foot um, length in your standards. But Joe, it still looks like a box to me, right? I mean, okay. It, 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 I don't know if people told you the history of what this this area is going into. Berlin doesn't have a, a traditional downtown, and and so uh, they've been working 25 years to to get a state approval to, in effect, uh, create a downtown, and. Mm -hmm. and um, so this, this building is like the first building you come to in our new town center, and I just don't see a lot of wow to it. I, you know, it, it's a pretty corporate-looking building. I, I, I don't know what the rest of the troops think, but that's, that's my thought. That it, it's, it, it, I think it needs to be gussied up, I, but I'm only one. Okay. We, we can certainly take a look at it. Um, I know one, one, you know, we did look at these standards and, and, and I, I, I know that this comment had come up before in one of the meetings. Um, and certainly we'd be willing to look at it. I, I would ask if there would be some relief to the 25 foot uh, high uh, building and maybe we can kind of break up some of these roof lines a little bit more. Um, the at 22 feet, we are covering all the rooftop equipment that Starbucks will have. Um, so anything above 22 feet is really just some additional um, screening, but it's not going to hide anything that's on this roof any better once it exceeds 20 feet, 22 feet. So um, I, I don't know where the standard came and what that 25 foot height requirement is, which is a story and a half. Um, but we would certainly look at kind of breaking this up a little bit because I think the building is getting a little bit top heavy uh, in terms of the design. Um, we can certainly look at some other uh, ways to kind of we say um, make it less boxy, less corporate looking. Um, but with, with the understanding that that obviously Starbucks has some some requirements that um, we'd have to meet as well, but but they are somewhat flexible. Um, but in terms of the footprint of the building, um, there really are a limited number of footprint options that um, plan options that we have um, where their building would would work inside. So really what we're talking about is making some changes to the exterior portions of these buildings. And, and some of that may be just some steps and some articulations. But again, you know, this building it is only 71 feet long. Um, so I, I definitely would like to have some more discussions and let us take a look at that with our client. Um, but we certainly uh, appreciate the comment and we'll, we'll work to uh, make it more acceptable. Yeah, I, yeah I, I agree that a little more articulation would be nice. Okay. And I always thought, Joe, that that wall that, uh, and I, I sort of like the wall concept, but, but if there was a way for the, the town of Berlin to, to have like notices on it, you know. I don't know if if, if that could be done. I I've sent this to a couple of people and they always look at me kind of cross-eyed like I'm full of it. But uh, uh, you know, you see what I'm looking at. This this is going to be a in our downtown, and if we get mm -hmm. to would have a section saying school board meeting tonight or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, you, you've done thousands of these, and I've done zero of these, and I was just wondering if you can get creative and help us out here, maybe. Um, yeah? I'd rather see you go with your public public art 
Uh, okay, unless yeah. you're here, not the fair, notice board. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough, yeah, so, or, something, yeah. Or you can probably do both, but I was thinking the same thing about some type of a public art mm. yep. thing. You're talking about on the, 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 the six foot wall, screen wall here? Yes. Yeah. 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 I know you can't see my cursor, but yeah, okay. Well, I do think the roof line needs to be broken somehow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where the botchedness comes from. Mm -hmm. We can figure out, figure out a way to break well, that roof line, uh, uh, either by receding it or something, you know, moving it around. Or does it have to be the whole length have to be uh, 25 feet? No, I don't think the whole length. I don't length think the whole length has to be 25 feet. That's no. I, but I have to reread okay. my own bylaws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because Subaru wasn't a whole 25. Right, yeah. right, right. So I, th I think I think there's a opportunity to get, get a little creative with that roof line to make it look less less like a box. Okay. We can certainly look at that for sure. Um, we think it out loud here. Yeah. That's not ruling. No, and, and I know that, that, that this is kind of what we're looking for um, because these, you know, we all know what the standards are, but they're, you know, there's a lot of uh, flexibility in these standards, so we want to make sure that we're meeting them. Yeah, I, I like your courtyard. I think courtyard is nice. Mm -hmm. I, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that'll be a nice place to, 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 to sit outside. Um, and like I said, it is, it is, it's not a fully covered patio, but it's, it's a sunscreen courtyard patio. So. Is there anything besides a trellis? I mean, is, or is it just a trellis and that's it? Well, you have this screen wall. I, I don't know if you can, if you go back to the, the, the elevation, the main entrance, there's a four foot high brick screen wall yeah. here as well to yeah. help screen this area. Right. Um, I'm thinking about the roof, but roof line. Roof, there's nothing to prevent precip. precipitation. There is nothing to present precipitation right now. But that is certainly something we can look at. I just, just wondered. Uh, typically, you know, um, in these outdoor areas, in, in inclement weather, they don't really get used. Yeah. It doesn't look like the regulations say that the entire building has to be 25 yeah. feet. It's silent on that. It, it, just, uh, yeah, it, it says a 25 foot height. Yeah. 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 It doesn't, doesn't say 100 percent or 50 percent or. Yeah. That's what we came to in our last uh, application. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so since we, we have some flexibility there, we can certainly play with these these roof lines uh, to break up this this building a little more. Um, and then you know, in terms of um, windows, I mean, we, obviously, I think we kind of meet meet the requirements there. This the, the back side of the building or the back side of the plan with the uh, with the pickup. There, there's not a lot of windows up in that pickup window, but but if that's the whole back of house. That's their kitchen, their serving area, their their make their uh, you know coffee making area. So that that really doesn't lend itself to having having windows on on the side. And, and Joe, I've heard this in other applications, and I'm again, I have no experience in it. But but the second floor, if it was faux, you know that if you put structures up there that gave the impression that there was a second floor there, but it's not, a, there's, you know, second floor isn't there. How does that look in, in, in uh, something like this? Um, it, this one might be a little bit tougher to do uh, just because um, I think we might want to, you know, <clears throat> with the way Starbucks is being, we'll say the, the corner, right, which is kind of like the kind of we'll call it the iconic element here right with the wood yeah i think windows and that might look a little bit uh, forced instead of like natural um the way it should be uh so i'm not sure that that would would work in this situation uh in terms of putting these we'll call it um not faux windows but secondary windows in here to make it look like a two-story building um but we certainly can can look at so look at these options and suggestions, and, and when we you know come back, hopefully we um, it can can give you a couple ideas that we think will make it um, you know more more palatable for what you guys are trying to do with this downtown. And another uh, district. another I don't know silly stupid idea. 
some, something on the roof, iconic, you know, uh, that that sits above, you know, some sort of structure. I don't know what that would be, but you got a clock tower in mind, do you? No, yeah. not a clock tower. <laughs> no. I'm thinking like. Just get the one from the bank. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we, we saw some, uh, there's so much stuff on the internet, don't worry. Yeah, but it's, I don't know if, you, if you've done anything like that, that would, you, you know, point it up in the air and, and make people want to travel to this Starbucks and say, holy hell, that looks pretty cool. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we've done we've done a different. You know, we've done a lot of different designs for Starbucks. So, um, and, and other, you know, smaller buildings like this. So, there's certainly things we can look at that to, to kind of give you a little bit more. Uh, we'll call it a, a beacon, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For the building. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's a name beacon. Do you have anything else, Kevin? I mean, uh, Joe. Uh, unless you have any further questions, I, I think, you know, we, we kind of have the general idea of what um, some of the comments are. Uh, I'm just kind of open here to listening to, to the board, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly uh, take those comments uh, and, and see what we can do. The, um, anything further, Tor? Uh, nothing. Polly, anything further? No. Carla? No, I'm good. So I lost you in the camera here. But <laughs> uh, Tom, do you have any further comments? I think we need to talk about a date. Yeah, I was going to say, let's talk about schedule. Let's talk about dates. Uh, uh, we need the bike information from you. There's a number of things we brought up today that uh, yes. we'll be looking for to feel that, obviously, our title. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what works? Uh, I mean, we meet every twice a month. So we try to stay with our regular schedule. It's uh, the, always the first, uh, Tuesday, the first Tuesday and uh, third Tuesday of the month. Which would be January 4th and or the 18th. But we, definitely not the 4th. Uh, you yeah, know, that's a little too quick. Oh, it's too bad, because we, 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 we're yeah. open that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the 8th would be a... 18th. The 18th would be a possibility. But, but I can talk to uh, all the parties and, and get back to you. You know, we can talk to Matt, see how that works with some of the things that you need to do. I mean, being the holidays, too, where yeah. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. it's hard to really think about us doing anything until after the first, to, you know, to get a team together, because yeah. there's always somebody who's out on vacation or, you know, yeah. gone to visit their grandmother or whatever. So well, the 18th to, might be too soon? Might be possible. Yeah. I'll tell you what, when we, when we uh, do we have the 18th, set, we have to set a date. We have to set a date, certainly, otherwise okay. we have to reward it. Mm -hmm. And we have to have yep. two weeks' notice and all that other stuff. So. Yep. Uh, let's let's um, uh, 18th. Yeah, 18th. Yeah, 18th. February to be safe. <laughs> first, February first. Uh, yeah, we could we could go February first. Sure. I uh, I won't be here. Uh, well, uh. I'll be out in Colorado, Colorado. Well, let's try for the 18th then, and we'll try to get at least as many of the elements done, and, and hopefully. If, we can't get it all done. We can get it down to just one or two items to remain. If we have to come back, you know, again, if the 18th we'll doesn't do work, just get back promptly, yep. and we'll 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 yep. have a meeting that date, and we'll just uh, simply adjourn it to another date. And so we, we have had special meetings as, as well. Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to encourage that. At this uh, point I understand now. that. So, Tom, um, if, when would the submission be in for the for the 18th of January? There, there's no regulatory okay. requirement. This board likes to have stuff about a week before meetings. Okay, that's okay. No problem. Yeah, so we, we, need, we need a week, a week to, to have an opportunity to review right. it, yep. given our other schedules and everything else. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, recess uh, uh, to the 18th. Um, I'll make that motion that we recess this the 18th. Uh, uh, second. Uh, second. And uh, uh, discussion of that motion. All those favor that motion, please have to say by saying aye. 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 And, uh, aye. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll recess that date. If that date does not work out in terms of submittals and, and getting yes. things done, uh, please be in touch with Tom and uh, we can work around that. Yep, we'll talk to the Berlin Mall folks, we'll talk to Matt, and, and we'll, you know, shortly we'll determine whether or not we can meet that date. So.
I mean, I can always participate remotely, but it's just not really functional. I get to see my grandchildren out there yes. once a year, you know, so. Yeah. This would not be a high priority. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Well, we thank appreciate you all. taking the time. So thank, thank you. Uh, thank you thank for coming you. out. Right, I think this is a very good presentation. I think we got some things to work on here. I just I commend, I commend the team for what you've done. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Good job. I'm off. All right, that, why, Carla, okay. Mr. Starro, how are you doing? He went off to her, how are you oh, good. 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 good, good. That's how I miss your uh, poker so face. So, we got a couple uh, of things here we want to do before we call it quits uh, tonight. Uh, um, we have minutes. Those are the minutes of our meeting of yeah, I'm <laughs> November 2nd, I believe. No, I should write it out on this thing here. 16th, November 16th, yes. And there, yeah. were, um, there were a number of comments on that. I think Christy's already cleaned up these comments. Am I mistaken, Christy? Yeah, I, I think she did. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Most, most, most notable is, is that, that uh, Tour did not make some of these motions that he's claiming to have made. <laughs> no, no. Not, not from the uh, ICU that night. So, so, uh, so Tour wasn't here, but uh, you did clean, yes, you did make those changes. I think he changed it. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yep. So I'll, I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I move to approve the minutes of, when is it, November 2nd? November 16th. 16th. November 16th. Uh, as amended. As amended. Because all our suggestions prior to this meeting today are simply suggestions uh, given to the recording secretary. You really yeah. have to make changes at, at the meeting to be technically yeah. correct. Yeah. We need a second, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have a second. Uh, second. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, and we have approved the minutes as amended. Does uh, the board want to have a deliberate session tonight? No. No. It's pretty clear to me. Is that enough for you? It's, that's almost a majority, isn't it? <laughs> Clearly a vocal majority. Yeah. Okay, I uh, think we need to, do we? No, I, I think, I, I think there, uh, if there are thoughts or uh, questions um, that we'd li like to share with uh, the applicants' team. We might want to think Thank about um, uh, sharing that amongst ourselves and deciding how to proceed with that. So, oh, I, so no. what we'd like to do is, is suggest that, that it's a form of deliberation that we, we anything comes that we have not conversate, discussed tonight with regard to the drawings. That's on top of our list of things to do we have just let's share with each other and see if we need to pass it on i think it's acceptable practice sounds shit flaky but it should work okay in that case i will entertain a motion to adjourn so moved motion second motion to <laughs> second to adjourn uh, second oh well, yeah yeah i got, I got you uh polly all those in favor of that motion please say whatever saying aye aye, aye. And we adjourned. We thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank Happy you. holidays. Thanks. Happy holidays, everyone.